Valley Cooks. Did your mama make divinity? Today we're making that fluffy and delicious divinity. Rolling it in some toasted pecans, making a few log rolls too. candy and candy is a lot of fun. Don't be intimidated by the stories you've heard about making divinity or candy as long as you follow a few simple rules it'll turn out. You always make sure everything's out and in place before you get started. That's very important because candy is a fast process and everything needs to be out and ready. Now, a thermometer will break, so you don't want to take a cold thermometer out of the drawer and stick it down in boiling candy. I always put it in before I even start um, boiling it, so remember that as well. We're going to go ahead and put in our ingredients, and then we're going to hop over here and beat up an egg white, because the egg white has to be ready by the time the candy gets ready. This candy is uh, one and a half cups. Mine says packed brown sugar, but today we're going to use white sugar. So we're going to do one and a half cups of white sugar. And we're going to add a half cup of water. And a teaspoon of white vinegar. We're going to bring this to a slow simmer. So we're going to go ahead and turn on our stove top and bring it to a slow simmer. That means you need to heat it on a medium heat to start with. Don't rush it, okay? I'm not going to stir it. If you do stir candy, I have learned from Fanny Farmer that it's best to use a wooden spoon because it don't get hot when you're holding it and for it to have a flat bottom to help get the air bubbles and sugar off of the bottom of your saucepan. But I'm gonna let this come to um, some get some heat in there first before I add this. I'm not gonna put my thermometer in there just yet. And you can warm up your thermometer in some hot water and then put it in there if you want to. And I, we may do that in a minute. All right, so I'm gonna take my pastry brush and I'm gonna dip it into some water and I'm just going to wet the sides of the saucepan a little bit around the edges and this extra water will just evaporate out so if you're afraid you're going to hurt your candy you're not and then once you finish doing this you can put a lid on it right now i've got it on a simmer temperature and that way it brings it comes to a very slow boil and that's what you want it to do all right you can tell this is coming to a slow boil and the sugar is starting to be melted off the bottom of the uh, pot. I am not going to put this down in there because all I'll do is get sugar crystals on it. It's really best not to use something and stir it, if, especially if you don't have cream in your candy. There's no reason why it needs to be stirred. So we're going to put a lid on this. Well first I need to get my thermometer down in there. So I'm gonna run it under some hot water and we're gonna put it in there. Now that most of the sugar is, uh, you don't really see that many sugar crystals left on the bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and put this down in there. And um, Lord, there's barely enough candy in here to even touch the thermometer. But now this candy will rise as it boils so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put a lid on it and I'm going to let it boil for a couple of minutes while we beat up an egg white. And remember, if you get it too hot, you can add a little water, cool it down, and then bring it back to the right temperature. If you mess up, you know, it's fixable. All right, so you're going to take a room temperature egg and you're just going to use the egg white. You're going to put it in your mixer and you're going to beat it at a dash of salt until stiff peaks form. And then once this candy gets to the right 
temperature, we're going to pour it over the top of these beat up egg whites. Now I had to add an extra egg white to get this to beat up because there wasn't enough egg in my bowl to even beat up an egg white. And that's okay. If you use two egg whites, it's not gonna hurt a thing. It's about 220 degrees. We turn this off. It's about 220 degrees. So it's still got to get up to all the way to 245. Once it reaches a softball stage, I want to show you how it looks in some water, just for fun. We don't have a lot of liquid in here, so I'm going to tilt it just a tiny bit, make sure I get a good reading. I'm going to go ahead and turn up the heat. I got it on medium. I'm going to turn it up to high. I think I'm going to have to turn it all the way up to get it hot enough. And it's much better to go slow with it than to speed it up too quick, because then sometimes the sugar don't get melted good. So just for fun, I am going to um, drop some down in, in some water. Now you can use the water method test. That's what my mama, my mama did most of the time. She didn't have um, a thermometer that worked. These thermometers are tricky. And you use about a half teaspoon. And you just drop it down in cold water. You can see it's trying to get a little bit stringy on the spoon, but you can see down in the bottom how that looks. Really and truly, to me, it's about ready. Let's check on it. Oh yeah, now we've let it get too hot. But now today, it's humid outside, and according to Fanny Farmer, when it's humid outside, you should um, let it get a little bit hotter. Okay. Or it can make your candy get sticky. She also tells you not to scrape your pot. To beat it till it doesn't look as glossy anymore. We're going to add a little bit of vanilla flavoring to it and then I'm actually going to make pecan log rolls out of this. So instead of putting pecans in the candy, I'm actually going to roll the divinity in the pecans and I toasted them a little bit and make log rolls out of it. Okay, you can tell that it is not as glossy looking anymore. So I'm gonna beat this just for another minute or so and then we're going to take it out to make our rolls. All right, now if you're just making divinity, you can add some chopped pecans or whatever nut you like in your divinity, whether it's black walnut or walnut. Um, and you can drop it by the spoonfuls out on your parchment paper. But because I'm making log rolls, um, we're going to try to, while it's still sticky, let it stick in these pecans. And I'll make a couple of little pieces of divinity too. For the picture, for y'all. So you would just take it out and drop it onto your wax paper like this. And it's just that simple. So what I want to try to do is make little log rolls. And what I'll probably have to do is put this out a 
like this. Matter of fact, I'm going to turn it the other direction. We're going to make one big long roll. And we have to do it pretty quick because it needs to be able to stick into the pecans. And this candy, of course, needs to be airtight. And this is a candy, too, that you could uh, put different flavors in it. You know, if you like maple, if you like peppermint, if you like um, whatever you like, you can use the different flavorings, orange, whatever you think you would like, you and your family. I've got to rinse my hands off. Oh, it's so good. Hey, just like mom's divinity. Make sure you toast your pecans. And you got to get these pecans on there while the divinity's still sticky. See, it's already wanting to fall off. We'll just make little drops of divinity out of this that's left. Boy, it's perfect. The consistency of it is absolutely perfect. Parchment is like the best thing ever for candy. Okay, now I'm going to taste it. Y'all ready? Now that's a fresh and delicious log roll. Absolutely delicious. I've got to wash my fingers off. Woo! Just like Mama. Thanks for watching Colored Valley Cooks, where we cook like Mama did. If your mama made divinity and you miss it, get in that kitchen this year and make some delicious white divinity. Now, today we're making Divinity, and the Divinity in my cookbook uses brown sugar. I know a lot of people think that's not traditional Divinity, and that it's sea foam. Uh, my mother actually made it with white sugar, but I will say that recipe came from Fanny Farmer's cookbook, and it was called Divinity, and so that's how I made it, just like Fanny Farmer does.